In this video, I am showing you how to replace a radiator valve. Whether you want to change the valve for a thermostatic valve like this, or whether you want to change a thermostatic valve for another thermostat because it stopped working, then this video is gonna show you how to do that in depth, and I'll show you all the little tips and tricks which I've learned over the years. So when it comes to draining the system down, I very rarely drain the system down. I would say probably 95% of the time I leave the system full of water and I'm gonna show you how you can change this valve without having to drain the system down. And because it, this will only take an hour and the job will be done and the system will be up and running again and I'll be out of the customer's house. Whereas if I drain the whole system, it's, it's gonna be maybe the whole morning to replace just one valve. And obviously that's expensive and that's not what I want to be doing. So I want to let you know that I've made two versions of this video. I've made the short version, which this is, and I've made the super long version. Now the short version just goes over quickly and briefly how you take a radiator valve off and how you put a new one on. But in this 10 minute video, I cannot cover everything which I come across on a day-to-day -day basis when changing radiator valves. My extended video, I hope covers everything else which I come across. So whether you want to know how to use PTFE tape, different radiator valves, how to uh, replace the uh, tail which goes into the radiator, how to remove the olive and the nut, there's different thermostat, there's different threads, there's a whole host of stuff which that video covers, which this one doesn't. So this is my second version of this video. I had such great questions and feedback on the last video that I decided to incorporate some of these questions into the video and I've done a whole load of questions and answers at the end of the video. So if you do have a question, then stick around to the end of the video and then hopefully I'll answer that question for you. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you do find my video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. That will also help others to find the video. And of course, you can click subscribe if you want to see more help videos and share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it'll help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. And if you want to show your appreciation or support my channel, then you can click on the link here or down in the description. Right, now let's get on with the video and show you how to replace that radiator valve. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. Okay, so the first thing I will look at when it comes to changing a radiator valve is what sort of valve is fitted in the first place. So you can see here we have a fairly modern radiator valve it has a nut here and a nut here, and these nuts are both the same size. These are both uh, half inch nuts, and they uh, are both held on with, with olive. So this is what's inside here. You have an olive, this little uh, copper or, or brass uh, fitting here, and the nut goes on. And it's the same on both the uh, both sides of the valve. So you can fit this valve this way around. You can fit it that way around. It, it makes no, no difference. The, the valve will fit on there quite happily. And we have the same with the thermostat on the other end here. Okay, you can see you have the two nuts and it's set on the spigot which goes into the radiator valve. Now it doesn't matter if you're gonna change it for thermostat. So this is a thermostatic valve here. And you can see the thermostat will fit on the top here like, like that. And uh, obviously this comes off and then the thermostat will just fit on the top here. And now again, you can see how that will fit straight in its place without too much problem at all. A quick bit of information about thermostatic radiator valves. Now you can see on this thermostatic radiator, there are two arrows. The, these arrows mean that the, the water can flow in, in either direction. It, it doesn't matter which way round the valve goes, whether it goes this way, this way, and it doesn't matter whether you put it on the, on the return side or on the flow side, you can put this anywhere. Whereas uh, these older uh, thermostatic valves, these would only ever go on, on the flow. See, it has an arrow going in one direction. So this would only ever go on, on the flow side. So if you manage to get one which uh, has only got one arrow on it, you need to make sure, sure that it goes on the flow and the arrow is in the direction of the flow. Quick example of this is this brand new straight TRV valve. And you can see that it has one arrow pointing in one direction. So I'm all set up and ready to go. You can see I've got my dust sheet down, I've got a towel down, and I've also folded back the carpets. I always recommend fold back the carpet because there's nothing worse than taking dust sheets away and finding some water soaked through and it's made a mess on the carpet. So always fold back your carpet to protect it. 
So the first thing that we need to do is to drop the pressure on the system. And this is fairly straightforward. I will just do it from the bleed point on the radiator because we cannot take the radiator valves off with any pressure in the system. If we try doing that, we're going to get water spraying everywhere and uh, making a big mess because it probably will be dirty water. So all we need to do is come to this uh, valve here, open up with our, our bleed um, key and let the pressure out. And we just keep letting that out until the water stops. If you have loft tanks, then there's a possibility you might need to drain the whole system down. In general, I, I don't normally do that. I normally plug the central heating tank, but I'm not going to cover that in this, this video. But you can click the link up above or in the description below if you want to see my video on how you go about uh, plug in your uh, loft tank so the water doesn't come out of it. But in this video, we're going to go over a combi boiler and um, or, a, or a sealed system. So if you have a system where you have to fill up the water with a, with a filling loop and you have a pressure gauge, then uh, this is uh, going to cover that. So before you go bleeding this, uh, go to your boiler and make sure that your boiler is turned off and isolated. Uh, if there's any chance the heating or hot water's going to run, it may give you a problem or might damage the boiler. So go to your boiler, switch that main switch off on the wall and make sure that the display is, has gone off or the power light's gone off. So there's no chance that the boiler can run. And you're just going to start it off and let it go into the bowl here. Okay. And there we go. Okay, there's little tips for, for you when you're, when you're doing this. If you're... If this is on a combi boiler and your boiler is downstairs and this radiator is upstairs, then there's is very little that you need to, to worry about because uh, when we isolate the um, radiator, then we're going to create an airlock and, and the water can't get out. So as long as there's no radiators above this radiator, so there's nothing above it, there's not really going to be any water coming out. So we don't have to worry about uh, any uh, about additional water coming out of the radiator. Uh, another little tip uh, is if the radiator is downstairs um, and you're worried about water coming out when we come to remove this, this valve, then uh, if you isolate all your radiators upstairs, turn off one of the valves, again we create an airlock and that will stop water from what we call back flowing, flowing, flowing backwards through the system and coming out when you remove that radiator valve. So now I've dropped the pressure on the system. The radiator and the rest of the system is still full of water. So what I'm going to do next is to isolate both the radiator valves. So I'm going to turn this radiator valve off here. So we've closed the other radiator valve. So now again, we have created an, an airlock. I'm then going to take the cap off this one here. And I'll also close this valve here. Before I go taking this radiator valve off, I'm, I'm going to make this valve ready to fit. So what I'm going to make sure I do is I'm going to close this radiator down, this valve down. I can see the valve shut inside there um, and that's that's now shut because if we take this off and we start water coming, starts coming out, we can easily just bang this on there quickly and then we're not going to get water pouring out, out of here. There's, there's nothing worse than putting that on and then you've got water pouring out of here also where you could have just literally just pulled it off, pop that one on and then it, there's no water coming out, very little spillage. So make sure that this valve is shut. Now, I always use a joining compound. I've seen a lot of people just saying, just put the radiator valve straight back on without putting on there. I, I don't know why people would say to do that. I always use um, joining compound uh, because the, the last thing I want is, is a leak and I'm sure it's the last thing you want to, is a leak. So we only need a little bit. We just need to put it around the, the edge here You'll see people quite just want to show you uh, the radiator valve and uh, what you should be doing to, to seal them and, and what's inside them so you, you know what you're trying to do here. So this is um, screwed into the radiator and then we have this little spigot sticking out. Now what fit holds your radiator valve onto the radiator is just this, this nut and this, this olive. Okay, so you have an olive here and you have, have a nut here. Obviously the nut goes on first and the olive goes on second and then the valve goes against here. Now I quite often see or people think that this nut seals the radiator uh, valve. Okay, they, they think that this somehow seals it. This is not the, the case at all. So there is no point in getting uh, PTFE tape and, and wrapping it around here, trying to make us a, a seal and, and thinking this is gonna do something. It, that will do absolutely nothing. That is not what seals a radiator valve. Okay, so you're just wasting your time with doing that. And there's no point putting a silicon sealant on it uh, or joining compound or anything else on there. It's not the part that seals it. The part that seals it is where the olive pushes up against the um, seating on, on the valve here. Okay, so where that bit touches that bit, 
That is the part which does all the sealing. It's not even this end of, of the olive. It's, it's this part here. Because when you do the, do the nut up on here, okay, it goes onto there. It, it squashes that, the olive, into that seating, and that's not what seals it. So when you come to, to do this, all we need to do, like I said, showed you before, is you just get a smear of this, and we just wipe it around the, the inside here. That's all that is needed. You, you don't need to get a great big dollop like that and, and be sticking it in the, in the hole. That, that's not what's needed, okay? We don't need to be doing that, okay? Again, I see people doing that, and that is not what is, what is needed. Okay, because now that it's all gone up inside the, the valve there and then that's going to get washed around your system and, and maybe causing you, you problems. So you, you don't want to be doing that. Okay, so we're just going to clean that out now. So you can now see that when we have this paste on, on here, like that, we we'll put a little bit around there again. I've done this a million times and I've, I, I haven't had a, a joint leak uh, due, due to this, uh, the, the, they, they always seal. The only time it has, if there's something a bit dodgy about the olive, uh, and then I would look to, to maybe wrap a PTFE tape around the, around the olive, um, and maybe use, use paste, belt and braces as I call it, uh, but you can see then that would just sit in there and it just squashes up against there, and, and, and that's all, all that's needed. If you're really worried, you could just maybe smear a little bit more on, onto the olive, to, to try and seal that. But like I say, I, I only ever do that if I think that the joint looks particularly dodgy and I want to make sure. 99% of the time that is, is all that I do and that seals it absolutely fine. Right, okay, another thing you need to make sure of. So once again, before I undo the nuts, I check that the other valve is turned off, I check that this valve is turned off and my bleed valve is shut. And now this nut here just undoes like that, okay? And I'm not going to undo this a long way, I'm just going to loosen it. And then we come to do this nut here. Now we've, the big thing with this one here, we must always support this valve. I've seen people saying about grabbing the pipes and holding it, don't be doing that. That is not the thing to, to do. If you grab this and you don't support this, this valve, there's a good chance that the valve is going to twist and you're going to kink your pipe. You're going to damage the fit in here and it's, you're going to make a right mess of it. Always support this radiator valve. I always use a spanner like, like this. You can use other ways of, of doing it. But uh, the main thing is, is you support that valve so it cannot move, so it cannot twist at all. And this is what I do every time. So turn that over, gently hold it, and there we go. See that nut wasn't too tight. And I'm just going to watch out for any water coming out. See how these valves move. Okay, we see we've got a bit of water coming out. So what can happen now is just as I pull this, this off, there suddenly be a big gush of water come out. So just be aware when you come to take this off, you might get a, a gush of water. If you're worried about your nice carpet or something like that, again, a vacuum is excellent, or you could just drape a towel over, over the top of it just to make sure that there's, there's nothing coming out. But um, I'm just gonna gently wiggle this off and we'll see what happens. And there you go. See, there was a little splash there. It wasn't too much, but it's still a little splash. And then you can see what I mean about this. I'm gonna try and get that out of the way. Don't you can see that, but that there, see, it's just going to continuously run now. And then you've got to keep catching that, that water. It may not look like a lot, but after a while, that, that's quite a lot of water. And that's just going to keep on, on running. So this is where my little bit of kitchen roll, a little bit here, just stick it in the hole there, like that. There. And that just stops the water from, from running out and then you can now mess around with this joint here. So you can see I'm able to move my radiator valve around quite a lot. And that's because it's connected onto plastic pipe under the floor. Now you can see with plastic pipe, it gives me lots of movement and I can twist it from side to side. Now you're probably gonna have copper pipe under the floor. Now with copper pipe, you're not gonna have the same amount of movement. You are gonna be able to move it a, a bit, but be careful, don't force it, because you don't wanna kink the pipe and you don't wanna damage the fitting under the floor. So a little tip for you here, if your pipes don't move very much. Now I've already loosened this nut here, then what I'm looking to do is to then 
as I pull it off the uh, spigot or the tail on the radiator, I would then twist the valve around. And then that way I can then drain the water out through the radiator valve and take the pressure off the rest of the system. Obviously I'm still gonna need to try and block off this um, spigot here or the, or the tail because the water is gonna keep glugging out of the radiator, but that's the way I would look to do it. Now, if you're still having trouble moving the radiator valve off the radiator, then you might wanna think about taking the floorboard up. That may give you a lot more movement, but if your radiator uh, valve is setting in the concrete floor and it's very short, then you're probably gonna have no movement at, at all. It's probably just not gonna move off the radiator. And then if you watch my other video, that actually will tell you what you can do if you cannot move that uh, valve. Hopefully, we're not going to get any water coming out, out of here, but I, I don't know how much pressure is still in the system. Remember that valve over there is shut, so the rest of the system is still sealed. So before I go undoing this nut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now open this, this valve up just gently, and we're going to see what water com comes out. Okay, so we've already loosened it. So it's twisting a bit. So I'm just going to hold that valve. And there you go. See, so if I'd have just taken that nut off the bottom, I'd have suddenly got a spray of water coming out. But this way I can just let the pressure go. Again, I would normally use my, my vacuum here. I just stick it on the end of the, the pipe here, suck up the water and, it, and it's job done. I try not to keep it on there too much because I don't want to suck out more water than I need to. But before I had a vacuum, this is the way I would do it every time. Okay, you can see that water slowing down there now. You could open this up just to prove that it's, it's fine, which it is. Okay, and I'm just gonna shut this down now. So now all we're gonna do is gonna just change this, this valve over. Now again, we, there was still a little bit of water coming out, so when I undo this, this uh, nut here, we are gonna get some more water coming out. But we know that this valve is shut, so we're just gonna take it off, pop it straight back on, and it's job done. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that this towel is wrapped around the pipe completely because I don't want any water dripping down into the ceiling and, and maybe come making stains on the ceiling downstairs. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo that nut there. And you can see I can undo the nut, I can push it down. Now, if you find you, you cannot push this nut, this is wedged in, in place. This usually because there's lots of paint on, on the pipe. And in its case of cleaning that paint off so you can move this nut out of the way if you need to move it out of the way. And then you can see now, I'm just gonna lift it, this off and it's gonna see what happens. Okay, so you can see we got a bit of water coming out. I'm just showing you, I wouldn't normally let water run out. Uh, sometimes if I do that, I can just put my thumb on it to stop the water coming out. Be careful, this, these edges can be sharp. You might cut your finger, but then we, if that's not the case, we could just literally take that one off, drop it on the floor and pop that one straight on. Okay, and then do this nut straight back up and then it's, then we're ready to go. Okay. And now we're just gonna pull this, this plug out here, our little plug, watch out, because there will be some water come out as we do that. So I'm gonna try and get this pipe ready just to line back up again. Gonna pull that little bit of kitchen roll out. I'll do it carefully because I wanna make sure it all comes out. I don't want any bits of paper left inside the radiator valve. There you go, so it's glugging out there. So I know the water's coming out. Now I could just pick that up. and put it into position. And there we go. And then again, when it comes to do it, what I usually do is I just knit this up. Okay, now that's that's ready to, to go, that's ready to be tightened. So I then put my spanner on here again. I hold that good and tight so that the valve cannot twist and we just knit this one up. Okay, and the same for the bottom. We don't need to hold the valve now. And we just do this one here up. And there we go. So now all we need to do is to go back to the boiler, raise the pressure back up again. Then we can come back here, turn on both the radiator valves, that one and that one, and we can check that there's no leaks here. And, and that's it. So you can see that is a fairly simple job. Okay, it's exactly the same if you want to change it for a thermostat. You would do exactly the same thing again. This is the thermostatic valve. Now, so 
you may not know that every time you get a thermostatic valve, um, you, it always comes with these dust caps, okay? These dust caps are called decorators caps. And what they, they do, they take the place of the thermostat for when you're, you're decorating. So rather than putting this on, you put this cap here on, you screw that down and that would close that, that valve. So it does exactly the same uh, principle as closing this valve here. Now this one's shut. I can then put some paste on, on here like that. Exactly the same on the other side. Like that. And then that was ready to go. I just undo the nuts again, exactly the same, and I can pop it on. Let me show you how quickly we can do this. Put that onto there. Undo the nuts here. Make sure that one there is shut. We can undo that one there. Okay, and I'm ready to go. And I'll get my other valve ready. And that is literally how quickly I can change one valve for another valve. Again, if I had my vacuum here, I wouldn't have uh, any mess at all. But just do bear in mind that things can go wrong. Things don't always fit the way they're, they're supposed to. So this went nice and easily, as you saw. And like I said, I've seen this a million times before. And this is a nice, easy radiator valve. The pipe moves are okay. The fittings are okay. So it all goes really smoothly. And again, before we tighten this up, always put our other spanner on here. Make sure the valve is straight. Pull it up against it. There we go, it nips up. And just do the last one, nip. And there we go, that's that. Then we then take this head off and we can replace it with the thermostatic head. Which just goes on there like that. Okay, that's that one there. Before I go into the questions and answers, I'd like to say a really big thank you to all the heating engineers who've watched this video and they've also read the comments and the questions and they've answered people's questions. It's really great to see and hopefully we can raise the profile of heating and plumbing engineers. Uh, and for all the engineers who are worried about somehow that I'm giving away trade secrets and we're losing work because of videos like this, then uh, my thoughts are that the people watching this video, either they just don't have the money to, to call us out or they're keen DIYers like myself. So they're just not going to call us out anyway so i hope that puts some of your minds at rest right now let's crack on with these questions so here's a quick question that came from uh, nadia kennett and she asked is it the same procedure for both um, inlet and outlet and lock shoes and trvs yes it is exactly the same it, it doesn't matter which side of the radiator you're on um it's, it's or whether you just got a lock shield and, and a wheel head on the other side it's exactly the same procedure um for, for both sides of the radiator and one thing i, I might mention is i did say about uh, the flow and the return in case you don't know what flow and return means uh, the flow is the side of the radiator which which gets hot first uh, the side which the water flows into first of all that is always referred to as the flow and obviously the other side is then return now that isn't a problem these these days um we it doesn't matter whether that flow is on the left or the, or the right uh, but if you do manage to pick up a thermostatic valve which has only got one arrow on it pointing in one direction that needs to go in a direction of the flow and you can only find out which way the flow is by running your central heat and seeing which side gets hot first. So I had a comment or observation from someone called Bimble and he makes the uh, comment to watch out for uh, the threads because sometimes that they can be different. Okay, what he's talking about there is I have two radiator valves. Now both these valves look pretty similar but you can see that the new one's got a much coarser thread. I don't come across many of these old valves with the fine threads. What might happen is you might take the old one off, put the new one on and then when you come to do the nuts up they, they just don't do up because the threads are completely different what you then need to do is obviously then you need to take the olive off you need to take the nut off the pipe and then obviously clean the pipe up you'll need to take the tail out of the radiator uh, okay before you can fit the new radiator valve and of course my other video goes through how to do all that 
So I had a few comments about using the paper to block off the radiator. Now, um, Nick Bold Eagle, he made the suggestion about using a wet wipe. And a wet wipe does seem like a really good idea because wet wipes are super strong. You can really wind it into that the hole. It's not gonna tear and you're gonna block it off nice and easily. What you don't wanna use under any circumstances is toilet paper. Toilet paper is designed to break up. Obviously, I, I do carry caps and I would sometimes block off radiators with caps, but uh, you may not have those caps. So so if you do use um, uh, paper, make sure you're using a nice strong uh, kitchen roll. But uh, I think using the uh, wet wipe is a really good tip. So I had a few questions on whether you should remove the olive and the nut. Here's my thoughts on that. So I have a brand new pipe and I've put a brand new valve on it. And I've done the, and put the, uh, obviously the nut on, put the olive on, I then do it, do it up. Okay. And then I, I decide that oh, it's not something I want to do something else. And I take the valve off again. Okay. And, and I put it back on, finish the job. Then I don't touch that valve for 10 years. And I come to it in 10 years time and then I decide I want to change it to a thermostat. Now, when I undo this, this nut now, has anything happened to this nut or this olive in 10 years? Has it suddenly worn away? Has the nut worn out? Well, uh, the, the uh, nut is, is made out of brass and the olive may be copper or, or brass also. And the pipe is copper. They don't rust and they don't corrode. So has anything happened to them? I think not. Okay, so if you want to use the the old olive and the old nut, then then yeah, there's not a problem. But you just got to be aware that sometimes these are in different places. Sometimes they can not quite fit the same, which is what my other video covers about taking the nuts off and taking the, the olive off. Uh, because changing the olive can be fraught with all sorts of problems. Because if that pipe's been been crushed, then that that opens up a whole another load of, of problems which you might come across. Now, of course, if I come across this and this nut has been chewed up, I can see there's all water running down in a pipe here, and someone's been on there with their with the mole grips. Then, then yeah, I'm I'm going to take this this nut off. I'm going to replace that that olive. But like I say, watch my other video if you want to know how to remove the nut and the olive. So Pirate Dave, he asked, is it the same procedure for 10 mil pipes? Now the procedure is exactly the same for 10 mil and for eight mil pipes. But uh, the only thing you do need to watch out for is the fitting which is on the on the pipe. Uh, there's all sorts of different fittings which are, are used from taking uh, eight mil uh, and 10 mil to, to 15 mil, or you can have special valves which are actually eight mil and 10 mil. So there's a whole load of different fittings which uh, you will come across. Um, so that is something you do need to watch out for if you have a, a small uh, micro bore pipe. So we've got this great bit of advice here from Tracer One, and he said he's been doing this method for many years and the key to it is preparation. And I couldn't agree more with him. Okay, it is all about preparation. Make sure you got everything to hand. So everything is really close to you. You got your tools ready, you got your towels ready, bowls ready, everything ready for any eventuality. If your radiator valves look different in any way, or maybe you just like more information before you attempt this job, just click the link. Okay, so that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful. If it has, then you can give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. That will also help others to find the video. And of course, if you want to show your appreciation, you can leave a little tip in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. And if you want to watch my super extended video, then obviously you can click on the link here and that covers everything else which this video does not cover. And don't forget, share the video with your friends and don't forget you can subscribe to see more help videos. Bye for now and I'll see you next time.